You know, one of the uh, things that I find uh, very prevalent is that you, lots of people don't know really the definition of salvation or whether they're saved or not. And um, they try and define it this way and that way. And within Christendom, if one can say that, um, I don't know whether one should use that terminology really, but within in the people who are religious, there are so many different attitudes towards salvation and different understandings of the word and uh, when some people use the term saved they mean one thing and God means something different and one has to wonder very often just what they do mean and the more I go around meeting different churches and people the more I wonder uh, how people can get such funny doctrines and ideas and I felt tonight it would be good if we just went back to the good book and we saw just what it means and probably the person who best exemplifies salvation the thief on the cross and uh, you might think it's a surprising place to start and I know there are those that would plead that we should wait and go through to Pentecost. Well, I don't accept that. And um, if you turn with me to Luke chapter 23 verse 42, you'll read these words. No time. Um, in Luke 23, verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now, all that person asked, he said, Lord, and he was being crucified next to Jesus Christ. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Seem very simple words, really, don't they? But as we're going to see, they had great significance. And he uh, said, look, just remember me and Jesus said look you're going to be with me today you're going to be with me in paradise now is there anyone would, that would feel that isn't salvation hmm good because to be with Christ in paradise I think would be pretty good to be saved don't you hmm and so, if you're one of the people that believe no one could be till after Jesus had risen from the dead, well, keep your doctrine, I'll keep mine and the Bible. Uh, and there you see it. Now, you'll notice all he said was, Lord, remember me. Jesus said, right, today you'll be with me in paradise. Tell me this, what actually did he do in his life to gain salvation. What great promises for the future did he make? What great committal did he put forth? Well, none. He couldn't, could he? So, the fact that uh, of committal or the fact of the future has nothing to do with salvation, does it? 
Christ said, you're going to be with me today in paradise. Didn't say, if you do this, this, and this, and providing you do that, and providing you think this, then you will be. Just no, today. Simple, straightforward statement. What had the man done to deserve it? What had he done? Hmm? Nothing. So the first thing we need to realize about getting saved is firstly you don't have to do anything, secondly you don't have to be anything, and thirdly you mustn't promise anything. Half the people I meet are trying to bribe God. God, if you only do this for me, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And in fact, they're really trying to barter with God. And that's very foolish. Very, very foolish. See, God won't save you on the basis of what you're going to do for him. He's got angels to run little errands and go to the corner shop. He doesn't need you. He's got myriads of angels who, who instantly obey. Why should he bother to... Why should he need us to do anything? And yet, because of the way that the gospel is so often preached and the way it's presented to people, everyone gets this distinct feeling, you know, they must do something. And you remember the great apostle Paul fell down when a bright light shined from heaven. Do you remember the story? Falls down. And what did he say? Hmm? Who art thou? And then? What do you want me to do? Where was he sent? A street called Straight to get straightened up. And he was blind. And he wasn't rushing around. God didn't say, well, actually, Paul, now I've called you because I want you to commit your life and be a great apostle. I'm going to use you. I'm going to... I, I spent last night, you know, I met some people from the Invisible Church uh, last night in Trafalgar Square. And they said they were members of the Invisible Church. And they said, have you ever been? I said, no, I can't see it. 